Alright, we've got some folks coming in, but it's uh, after 6 o'clock and we want to get this started. Welcome to the Crosstown Theater. I'm Gary Shore, and it's uh, my pleasure to uh, be one of the hosts for the evening. Um, this is our first event we've held here. How many of you have been in this theater before? Very few. Yeah, I, I hadn't either, and it is just gorgeous. I, I think it's going to work out really well for venues like this. And the, i got to tell you, the staff here has been terrific to work with, so if you all have a need for a 300-seat theater, this is the perfect thing to come to. I also want to recognize, before we get started, the person on my team who really pulled this all together, and that's Jean Phoebus. Jean, is she here? She's my CFO, and she has done just a great job of organizing this. Um, I also want to say that uh, we, we've had, I think we've got some, we've had some people here from uh, city government, we've got some city council people who said they were coming and some county commissioners, I don't know if they're here, if they are, oh, there's, there's Frank calling the head up there. Anybody who's on the city council or county commission, please just stand up, let us acknowledge you and recognize you. Yeah, Thank you all. Thanks for being here. I mean, the, the subject of tonight is really having a community response to the condition of poverty. And I know all of us have been working on that for some time, but it takes a public-private partnership to really make a difference. And very fortunate to have many, many public elected officials who are really working hard to, uh, to deal with our biggest challenge. So. The Urban Child Institute, as I said, is the sponsor of tonight's event, and um, our mission at the Urban Child Institute is to improve the health of children in Shelby County. And nothing would improve the health and welfare of children more than helping families find their way out of poverty. And that's the subject of tonight's presentation. I'm confident we could all agree that as a community, our biggest challenge is the number of citizens who now live in poverty. And you all know the statistics. Um, I've been doing work in the community for 40 years, and we have made progress, but we haven't made as much progress as we should. We now have a poverty rate of almost 40, or 25 percent, and we have a childhood rate of 38 percent, with over 23,000 households living on incomes of $10,000 or less. So the programs we've been trying are, are really effective at providing relief, but we really need to continue to work to provide permanent solutions that are scalable. And almost a year ago, I was introduced to a book written by Marcella Wilson called Diagnosis Poverty. Marcella was first brought to Memphis by Jan Young with the Assisi Foundation. Jan and the foundation recognized Dr. Wilson's approach as unique and very effective. Assisi continues to fund training in community agencies on the transitions to success model, which is Marcella's model, the one she developed, and the one that you're going to be hearing about in a few moments. I, th I think Jan Young is here, but let's just acknowledge yes. Assisi Jan. Jan, thank you very much for all that you did and all that the Assisi Foundation does. Um, after reading her book, Marcella's book, and listening to her presentation, I joined Jan in both interest and excitement about the potential that this model has for moving people to financial sustainability. What I found most compelling is the treatment of poverty as a condition, recognizing that helping people navigate the agencies and not-for-profits assisting them was essential. In medicine, Complex disease is treated in a multidisciplinary, coordinated system of care. Yet we treat people in poverty through organizational silos, leaving the individual with the challenge of trying to figure out how they navigate through a fog of bureaucracy and fragmented processes. And certainly my old employer, Methodist Healthcare, has, has been a part of that. But Marcella's approach is about making a difference, not by asking people what they need, but by asking them what do they dream and helping them navigate to achieve it. 
As a healthcare executive, this makes tremendous sense to me. But like any business or social services concept, success only happens with effective execution of plans. And that is the other encouraging development that I think is so compelling. Dr. Kenneth Robinson and the United Way have embraced this idea and they are beginning to implement it through their program called Driving the Dream, which many of you I'm sure have heard about. I've supported United Way my entire career as a board member, as chairman of the campaign, chair of the board, and know the contributions made by the community, to the community by the organization. And United Way has been reevaluating their business model and is now, in my view, they are the perfect platform for this work for many reasons. But the number one reason is the leadership they now have in Kenneth Robinson. Kenneth brings to the job as a physician, experience as a physician, a former Tennessee Commissioner of Health, a former public health policy advisor to our Shelby County mayors, and he's been a very, very successful of a very large church. He's an outstanding communicator and leader, and he's taking United Way in a new, different, and exciting direction. And I really can't think of anyone who's better suited to lead this than Kenneth. He's the right person at the right time in the right place. And he will talk right after that. So it's now my pleasure to introduce the person who will explain the concept behind this new direction, and that's Dr. Wilson. Uh, she has more than 30 years experience in healthcare administration, not-for-profit management, behavioral health, criminal justice, and private sector programming. Her multiple degrees include a doctorate in health and higher education, and most recently as president of Matrix Human Services in Detroit, Dr. Wilson focused on developing a national standard of care to treat the condition of poverty. And she's now leading a national social change movement, movement with a new standard named Transitions to Success. And that is her topic for tonight, we as a community are blessed to have her with us, not only tonight, but from tonight on, to really help us build out this model. So please welcome Dr. Marcella Wilson. I have a speech here. Does anybody know what happened to it? <laughs> start a party. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let me start by saying, I love me some Memphis. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am just so proud to be here. My special thanks to Gary and, and Jean from the Urban Child Institute for their leadership and believing in the work that we are here tonight celebrating. That's what tonight's about. This is the work of close to 50 organizations across this wonderful city, all dedicated to changing the understanding and response to poverty. I am so deeply appreciative and proud because Memphis, you are becoming a model for our nation. This evening, I have 25 minutes to change your understanding and response to poverty and to inspire you to become a part of this national social transformation movement taking shape right here. Memphis is the home of our nation's first civil rights museum, the birthplace of the blues, rock and roll, and Piggly Wiggly, <laughs> our first super, super grocery store. Memphis has so much to offer, but like many urban cities across the nation, Memphis too has its struggles. Although the unemployment rate is only 4.1%, 39% of children 18 or younger in Memphis live at or below the poverty level. People are working, but they're not thriving. In 2018, approximately 71% of 
of Shelby County Schools <coughs> third to fifth graders scored below proficiency in math and approximately 79% scored below proficiency in English and language arts. This does not bode well for their future. The future of your workforce. The future of your community. My hope and my dream is that together we can change that story. Thirteen years ago, I left a successful career leading managed health care organizations to become the CEO of a struggling charity in the city of Detroit. At that time, Detroit had the lowest high school graduation rate in the nation, the highest infant and maternal mortality rate, and we were leading the nation's worst recession in our nation's history since the Great Depression. And now, as the CEO of a charity of which I had no experience, I found myself responsible for 10,000 of the nation's poorest. Our clients ranged in age from zero to 103 years, and all were struggling. In my new job, hunger, homelessness, and hopelessness were served daily. These clients living only 40 minutes away from my lovely home in West Bloomfield, Michigan, were struggling to survive. In Detroit, Memphis, and across the country, children are not choosing to be hungry. Seniors are not choosing to struggle with decisions between food and medications. And our disabled clients did not choose to be prisoners in their own homes because public transportation would not serve them. In Detroit and now across the country, I also witnessed the generational trap of poverty, where children born into poverty become the parents of children born into poverty. Thirteen years ago, faced with extreme poverty affecting so many, I asked a simple question. How do you treat this condition of poverty? And no one could answer the question. And my journey began. This quote that you see here inspired me 13 years ago. Nelson Mandela said, like slavery and apartheid, poverty is not natural. It is man-made. And it can be overcome and eradicated by the actions of human beings. And I believe this to be true. And I hope after today, you agree with me. Slide, please. It's important that you understand the lens I brought to this charity. I was not of the charity world. And I came from healthcare. And what you see here is the medical model. Very simply, research and evaluation define evidence-based best practice, which leads to condition-specific standards of care, a fancy word for recipes. Those recipes are trained and distributed across any practice that's treating that condition. We train, we implement, we measure. 90% of healthcare providers around the country submit their data to become part of this continuous quality improvement process. In this process, science and data drive practice not just good intentions. Slide This is what I discovered. I began my research and evaluation, and I discovered millions of pages of poverty-related <coughs> research with a plethora of evidence-based best practices. But that's where it stopped, leading to client self-navigation where those most at risk had to navigate health, human services, government, and education. 
That's analog analogous to telling a patient with cancer, I'm so sorry you have cancer, go figure it out. We would never do that. The second consequence, <coughs> individual practitioner preference. We allow practitioners in the treatment of poverty to self-determine how they want to treat the condition. We would never allow physicians to self-determine. It's all driven by the standardization of care. And finally, in the United States of America, we have one not-for-profit for every 213 individuals in this country, all self-determining how they're going to treat the condition of poverty. In this system of care, I discovered lots of good intentions, really good people, but no consistency in practice or measurement. I found that in our country, in Detroit, and at the organization I was running, science and data did not drive practice. Slide, please. My research continued. Everyone told me it was a money problem. <coughs> running a charity in Detroit during the recession, I had a little disagreement with that. But the research told a very different story. In the United States, we have the most expensive, most extensive delivery system in the world and in world history. Annually, estimated at 1 million, I'm sorry, 1 trillion, 660 billion dollars annually. And this does not include foundations, the generosity of corporations, our faith-based organizations, or individual giving. Sadly, the most expensive does not translate into the best. This system is client-driven, disconnected, and ineffective. Slide, please. <coughs> In the United States of America, a child is born into poverty every 33 seconds. In this beautiful city, one in five children face food insecurity. And in the United States, almost 40% of children will spend at least one year in poverty between the ages of zero and 18. The research is crystal clear. Kids born into poverty complete less school, work and earn less as adults, and are more likely to be poor as adults. The research is also very clear. The best way to improve health and educational outcomes for children is to improve the health and economic self-sufficiency of their parents and caregivers. That is the key. Slide, please. My research continued, and I learned that the Poverty Health Connect is direct and irrefutable. Most shocking, I learned that even sporadic food insecurity for young children can compromise the brain development, specifically the development of white matter, gray matter, the hippocampus, and the amygdala key for learning, for memory, and for impulse control. So as the CEO of Detroit's largest Head Start, with 2,000 zero to four-year-olds in my care, where hunger was a daily struggle, this was devastating news, because hunger was robbing our children of their futures. Slide, please. The research is clear. Poverty makes people sick. Poverty is caused by exposure to environmental conditions. It is not a character flaw. No one chooses to be poor. Poverty requires treatment. Let me explain. 
just like the environmental exposure of lead or asbestos leads to serious illness. The environmental exposures called social determinants of health that include lack of food, unaffordable housing, inadequate public transportation, underemployment, unemployment, poor performing schools, and limited access to health care. This is the cause of poverty. And to treat poverty, we must respond to these environmental conditions. The work that came as a result was the development of the first standards of care to understand, diagnose, and respond to poverty as an environmentally based condition. And today I'm very proud that we can associate these social determinants with direct diagnostic codes in the healthcare system. And for those of you in healthcare, we now have billable, reimbursable pathways to bring this work to your organization. Transition to success brings the nation's first standards of care and analytics to directly treat the condition of poverty. A system where finally science, data, and good intentions drive practice. Side phase. What we do, we train organizations across healthcare, human services, government, education, and faith based organizations to apply uniform standards of care with evidence-based key practices that include care management, coordinating all services, financial literacy focused on predatory lending, mentoring, encouraging people to identify people in their world that they look up to that can help them and support them, and one of the key best practices, volunteerism, People who volunteer, regardless of their age, their race, their economic situation, do better physically, emotionally, educationally, and economically. Using 211, most often led by the United Ways across our country, we identify, then track, and hold accountable the one trillion six hundred and sixty billion dollar network. This requires maximizing and holding accountable that already existing funded delivery system. And we can do this for adults, for youth, for older adults, and the disabled. All on different paths, but following the same journey. In this model, we no longer ask, why are you here? Or what do you need? We ask, what is your dream? And here in Memphis, that relates to the Driving the Dream program that United Way and Dr. Robinson is leading. We know when hope meets opportunity, dreams can become a reality. So does it work? And I'm going to be going through these statistics very, very quickly, but uh, I, on the last slide is my contact information. If you want more information, please don't hesitate. In Detroit, in Head Start, with no new funding other than research and evaluation, within one school year, we had statistically significant improvement in 14 of 18 social determinant domains with no new funding. Next slide, please. These continues the domains in Head Start, and I am so proud that Head Start in Memphis, uh, Porter Leaf, I believe is, is, is the name? is planning on implementing transition to success, and I'm so proud. Next slide. 
These results were accomplished in an outpatient behavioral health Medicaid clinic in Detroit. Again, no new money and an average length of stay of only six visits or a cost of less than $600 to the insurance program, we had statistically significant improvements in eight of 18 domains. And it's not rocket science to say that when you improve somebody's income, you find them even an entry-level job, you make sure they have enough to eat. Oh my gosh, look what happens to mental health. It's amazing. Next slide, please. These statistics I call my paper and pencil statistics while I was at Matrix, and I'm very proud of them. During the course of my 10 years at Matrix, every single year we had 90% and above compliance in Head Start of children receiving hearing and vision screenings, immunizations, all utilizing the existing health care delivery system at no cost to the organization. We distributed 500,000 pounds of food in the poorest zip code in Detroit with weekly distributions at no cost to the organization through community collaborations. And during my 10-year tenure, tenure at this charity, in our homeless women's program, nine of these women received master's degrees, 16 bachelor's degrees, 25 associate's degrees. In addition, 15 of their children were now in full scholarships in college. on Kauai in Head Start in an 18-month independent evaluation with no new funding. Statistically significant improvement in 9 of 18 social determinant domains. Next slide. On Maui, and I know it's a tough place to go, but somebody's got to do it, people. <laughs> Statistically significant improvement in 12 of 18 domains. Next slide. Statewide, again, no new funding other than research and evaluation. 11 of 18 social determinant domains with statistically significant funding. These are the numbers, but I want you to hear the real story. Video, please. This, and, uh, uh, this is kind of going on anonymously in a lot, or quietly. A lot, you know, not a lot of people knowing what's, what's happening in there, but what miracles are being done. It really is, and I think it's getting some national publicity, too, so some folks are going to try to copy and help their community. So, cool. something to be proud of. It really is. Uh, here's a little bit we're working on. Thank you. <laughs> we have uh, some corrections people in the audience. The young lady you saw with the master's degree, uh, she was a returning citizen in the city of Detroit in our homeless women's shelter. And now she's working in a hospital setting. All three are doing phenomenally well. So, how did it start? How did I land in Memphis? Well, I am very proud to tell you the story of Maria. <coughs> Not the movie. And the power of one. Maria Randall from the St. Jude Research Hospital heard me speak in D.C. approximately five years ago. And in that presentation, like I'm going to do with you this evening, I asked my audience to do something, get involved. Well, Maria took me for my word, and she came back to Memphis, and she called Jan Young. And the rest, as they say, is history. And Maria, I'd like to acknowledge you this evening. Maria Randall, thank you. Our key partner in Memphis, the United Way of Mid-South, Dr. Kenneth Robinson, he gets me. He is incredible, his team is incredible. And today, because of the leadership of Dr. Chan Young, we have over 40 organizations trained 
in TTS, and the United Way Driver of the Dream is the first United Way in the nation to adopt transition to success. And I believe the United Way Mid-South and you, the leaders of this wonderful community, are positioned to become a national model of care. Tonight, I am also so proud to introduce our newest partners, University of Tennessee Health Sciences and the Methodist Divine Health Care System. We have been invited to, and later this month, we will be submitting our first NIH grant to bring, finally, the research and evaluation that we need so desperately here in Memphis. is to position the United Way Mid-South and Memphis as a national model, where finally science and data drive practice in the treatment of poverty. And if my dream comes true, it'll be the University of Tennessee Health Science Center that becomes the home for the research meta-analysis and to lead the standardization of care of the treatment and of poverty for perpetuity. I didn't even keep track of my time, but I know I'm approaching the end of my presentation. Thirteen years ago, I never dreamed my life would have so much meaning or purpose. I never dreamed I would be invited to speak at Harvard, that this work would be recognized as a Clinton Global Initiative, that we would have pilots all over the country, and there's one in particular that I want to point out, the Third New Hope Baptist Church, where the pastor believed in this work, and today we have over six congregations doing this work, all with volunteers. This is what we do. Today we have technology partners that bring all of this to life in technology. I do not speak technology, but they do. I never dreamed in January of this year, Transition to Success would be cited in our first medical scientific journal by researchers from Johns Hopkins University. I never dreamed. would lead me to my calling. So my time has passed. I suspect I've gone over a couple minutes, Gary. If this work speaks to you, please be like Maria. Be the power of one. First, be intolerant of intolerance in all of its forms. Second, Share this new understanding with anybody who will listen. Make the connections. Make the introductions. At the last slide, you will all have my contact information. Introduce people to Dr. Young, to Gary, to Dr. Robinson. Make those introductions. Make those connections. And if you are in a position to support this initiative, be a change agent. Let our leaders at the Urban Child Institute know and become a part of this social change movement. So I conclude in the words of Elvis, a little less conversation, a little more action. Thank you. Thank you very much. How wonderful. Can you put your hands together for Marcella? Marcella is an extraordinary leader. Uh, she has uh, been an evangelist for her own work all over the nation. Uh, we are delighted that you're here tonight so that we can talk a little bit about uh, the Memphis Connection and what we're doing and how we are adopting 
uh, what she has done. Uh, how many of you want another Michelle, Jerome, and Denise here in Memphis with stories just like that? How many of us have clients, we have patients, we have people in our system that we would really like them to have that sort of testimony, that sort of personal story? I'm really grateful tonight for Gary Shore, for Gene Phoebus, and all of the Urban Child Institute because they have caught the vision, they have read Marcella's book, they understand that the only way we're going to move from here to there is to have a systemic approach. I, I really appreciate Gary, and as he mentioned at the outset, uh, one of the things that he and I have in common uh, is an understanding of systems, uh, uh, particularly healthcare systems and public health systems. Uh, systems designed not just to fix a broken bone or, or to give someone a flu shot, but systems that will improve the overall health of individuals, and in my case, in public health, uh, the health of communities and populations. So as a systems thinker and a systems builder, I was intrigued and inspired when about a, a month after I assumed this position, uh, I heard Marcella Wilson here in Memphis, undoubtedly brought and sponsored by uh, Jan Young and the Assisi Foundation. I heard Marcella tell this story. She presented uh, Transition to Success much as she has presented it tonight. And as she brought forth that model, telling at that time primarily how she had begun to take the services there at Matrix Human Services, uh, the 10,000 lives, the, uh, the 2,000 babies, those Head Start services, and built a system of wraparound services that would really address holistically the needs of the people that she was serving. When I heard her talk about that, and the fact that we couldn't just do one thing at a time, I said, Shazam! That's what we needed to, I, that was a big SAT word. I said, Shazam! That's what we needed to do at the United Way of the Mid-South. It resonated with me because the world of, of nonprofit human service agencies has traditionally been designed to address specific issues, specific problems that people bring one at a time uh, when they walk into the doors of our programs, our services, our agencies, supported by many of you in this room. They come one at a time. Did you hear Marcella saying that makes no sense whatsoever? Uh, when there are individuals that are given the diagnosis of cancer, you don't just send them out there for them to self-navigate from one agency, one doctor, one service at a time. It makes no sense whatsoever. But people in poverty have many issues, many issues. Uh, they understand that they have many problems. They have hopes, but they have very few opportunities. They face many barriers that cannot be addressed by single programs and single agencies, particularly when they're working in silos. The agencies we all know in this community, the agencies we all fund are doing extraordinary work, excellent work, but they're doing it in silos. They're operating in silos. They're being funded in silos. And in this room, we know that the problem for us in Memphis is the magnitude of poverty that we face. You know the statistics. Gary reminded you of those statistics. We are almost singular in having the burden of poverty that we face in this community. And we also know that the key to improving this area's economic prosperity is not for some of us, but for all of us. And that key is poverty reduction. So the board and leadership of United Way of the Mid-South have chosen to take a leadership position to be a unifying, coordinating sector leader to catalyze, to facilitate, to drive the creation of a system of services and supports that will help people in poverty achieve their dreams. When hope meets opportunity, Marcella, dreams come true. A system to advance individuals out of poverty to prosperity. A system that will help move individuals from where they are to where they dream to be. 
many programs, many agencies doing extraordinary work, but the needle never seems to move. There is a need for a system, and our solution is a system called Driving the Dream. Two and a half years ago, after listening to Marcella, uh, we managed to shop this around uh, the city of Memphis. Uh, we received some national funding. We received extraordinary local seed funding from some of you in this room, including the Urban Child Institute and the Assisi Foundation that supported us in standing up a pilot and then to implementing Driving the Dream. We are clear that what we are doing uh, has created a formula for success. It starts with our core as the United Way of the Mid-South. You know us, you know what we do. It started with our strong suit. United Way of the Mid-South has a funding relationship with scores of high-performing, highly efficient nonprofit organizations. You would call them social service organizations. We now call them human service organizations. You've been supporting this United Way as Gary has been all of his professional life. We know these agencies. They would not get a dime of United Way funding were they not doing extraordinary work. It starts there. Last year, 400,000 times, individuals walked through the door of a United Way program, agency, or service. 400,000 times. is that we know they are making it up as they go along. As they have an issue, as they have a problem, they present themselves to a United Way agency, service, or program. We channeled and directed over $12 million to support over 70 agencies that are meeting the needs as people present themselves one problem at a time. We start with our core, our United Way network of partners. To that we add driving the dream partners, agencies that are significant agencies doing great work on their own, not United Way agencies, but have understood the value of building a system of services and care. Agencies like NIFA and Church Health, whose podium we are using tonight, uh, and the RISE Foundation that have come alongside Agency saying we serve the same clients. We're serving a different purpose, we're meeting a different need, but we understand the value of collaborating and connecting in a system that serves these individuals. You add to that transition to success, the operating model that uh, Marcella has introduced tonight, add to that individuals who are not told what they need to do in life, but they are asked the question, what is your dream? And they themselves map out a way to achieve their dreams. The steps, the process, the sequence, the agencies, the services, the programs that they deem, not in a paternalistic way for also United Way or another agency telling them what they need, but they determine the map of their dreams. Add to that the Arizona Self-Sufficiency Inventory, which has been used in social service agencies around the nation by the federal government. It is built upon 19 human service domains, education, work and employment, housing, food insecurity. 19 domains on a Likert scale from one to five, from crisis to self-sufficiency, which serves as a marvelous way of assessing where an individual is and tracking whether that individual is improving from crisis towards self-sufficiency. And you finally add to that a technology to assess client data, to track client progress, to identify available resources within the data to make referrals and receive client referrals through a local shared web-based database called CoActionNet. This is an extraordinary <coughs> formula for success. You add that together and we get a no wrong door evidence-based collaboration that will move more people driving the dream recipients and beneficiaries out of poverty to greater economic self-sufficiency in the life of their dreams. This does not happen organically. It happens intentionally. 
Uh, so we are delighted uh, in this service delivery model to be uh, the agency, the entity, the backbone, as we talk about in collective action, uh, that provides the leadership, the strategy, the data, and the relationship support. Uh, this does not happen organically. It happens intentionally. And the board of United Way of the Mid-South has supported us in standing up this structure to be able to support the evolution and the development of this system. It happens with coordinated service referrals that create seamless partnerships between agencies. No longer will an individual have to walk through one door and walk out and self-navigate to another agency. There is a seamless partnership that occurs through the use of the shared database and what we call warm handoffs from agency to agency. With agencies learning within the system, others that have resources in Memphis of which they had never known before. It occurs with care coordination hubs that you can see sit at the center of that graphic that offer extensive support. There are definitely families and individuals that require more than single services, but there are care coordination hubs that are accustomed to doing comprehensive wraparound care coordination and case management. Our first four hubs of Driving the Dream are Porter Lee, Catholic Charities of West uh, Memphis, uh, Maritan, and Seedco. They know how they do this, and we have engaged them and have built capacity in those four agencies to serve as the care coordination hub for individuals and families that need additional services and comprehensive care coordination. So this evening, we are delighted. Uh, we are one year uh, into the implementation of Driving the Dream. Uh, this is not just a pie in the sky, a, a hope and pipe dream. Uh, we started uh, in standing up the system uh, in March of 2018. Built an extraordinary staff. Uh, they are at United Way of the Mid-South. They understand, Marcella, that they're doing something that is extraordinary, unique, and could be uh, replicated not only among other United Ways but among uh, other uh, cities that look like Memphis. If we can do this in Memphis, it can be done anywhere. Our first year goals were sector integration, getting the human services sector to work together, cultural transformation. You must understand that this is not how human service agencies naturally work. The culture uh, transformation, understanding the value of working together, adopting transition to success, being trained to do this, having a uniform language and a uniform approach <coughs> to clients that walk through any door, improved coordination of services, and obviously the expanded services for our families. In this first year, we are delighted. We have established 49 Driving the Dream partnerships. These are not just do-good agencies that are talking the talk, and not walking the walk, we have established uh, MOUs, Memorandum of Understanding, we have data sharing agreements, we have launched those four hubs of which I mentioned. Uh, we have secured $4.8 million in private and state government funding uh, that does not come out of the resources that you give to United Way of the Mid-South to support the work of agencies. Others understand, the private sector, others understand, Department of Human Services, State of Tennessee, that this sort of a coordinated approach is the key to moving people from where they are to where they dream to be. We launched the shared data and measurement platform, extraordinary CQI capacity within CoActionNet, and the training that we're bringing into the human services agency, some of which are paper and pen agencies, teaching them how to use data, to share data, to give feedback to the agencies when referrals are not being picked up, when referrals are being made, and in, when we use data, we've documented that 94% of the surveyed care coordination clients report progress in one or more of those ASSI domains. You don't know their names, but you can give us a hand for that sort of progress. For what Starting this month, our intent is to increase our data platform usage. We're teaching organizations to use CoActionNet. Uh, we are expanding our existing agency partnerships with schools, uh, government, and healthcare providers. Tonight, we are announcing within the next six months, 
We have an extraordinary partnership with Blue Care, understanding that their patients, by definition, are patients that have multiple complex social service needs, and that a comprehensive wraparound system of social services can be of help to them, the Department of Human Services, the Division of Community Services and Chevy County Government, uh, the Division of Human Services, uh, and the Shelby County Health Department, and we're delighted uh, that we are moving, serving the same clients, now serving them more effectively and more efficiently together, and increase access to data, establishing a 24-hour client intake and referral portal so that individuals might be able to call in and say, I have a problem, I have a need, where can I find help not only with that need, but yet ask the question, what is your dream? And what else might you need to help you achieve your dream? Uh, the issue of interoperability is critical uh, for us to be able to have data systems talk to other data systems, to have human service data systems interact with medical and healthcare data systems, to interact with public health data systems. Not easy to do, building those bridges so that clients don't have to start over every single blessed time they walk into a new door that someone will know who they were, that a referral can be made uh, seamlessly and through data, uh, through the digital uh, web-based internet data platform, and that we can know just what we need to know to be able to provide extraordinary service at the next referral point. And of course, our intent is to secure three to five years of scale-up operating support. We are delighted that you are here tonight. We are asking this evening that uh, you be aware of what we're doing, be aware of this national model, be aware of how United Way of the Mid-South has brought this model with your support uh, into Memphis and are standing up a network like this. Uh, we want you to advocate uh, for this kind of transformational approach to changing the lives of individuals. And we really do hope that you will help us with the adoption of the model. Uh, you are influencers, shakers and movers. You are individuals who fund agencies. You sit on the boards of agencies. You understand tonight, hopefully better, the value of such a comprehensive, order, organized, collaborative, wraparound approach that cannot be provided by any single agency or program. Help us uh, encourage others to come alongside you yourselves join the Driving the Dream Network and let us bring transition to success uh, to Memphis so that we will have more stories of Michelle, Jerome, and Denise. Uh, we say at United Way, where there's a you, there's a way clearly in this room tonight. Where there's a you, there's a way. If you look around, pause for a moment. Uh, do me a favor, I'm a preacher, don't be disobedient. Look around the room. Uh, you, haven't been, you haven't been peeking. If you look around, you'll see everybody that you know. A tremendous in where there's a you, there's a way. We won't have to come back a year from now and talk about the fact that the needle is not moving. We will come back with our own stories. Port Leaf could have brought stories tonight of the lives that have already been transformed. When hope meets opportunity, dreams come true. Find us on the web, look at the website, www uwmidsouth.org forward slash drive the dream. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Urban Child Institute. Do me a favor tonight. Look at your neighbors and say thank you for coming. God bless you. Have a good night.